up. If you've seen any of my other bag related videos before, you know that I take great delight in planning out what gear I might need for any specific occasion and that remains especially true when it comes to traveling. Now when traveling I want to simultaneously travel as light as possible but at the same time also bring everything that I could possibly need for any problem or issue that might arise during my trip and also I want to capture everything I experience in the best quality possible to save those memories. So for me bringing these two sides together isn't always that easy especially when it comes to camera gear. I do have a fair amount of camera gear and there's always that part of me that thinks that if I leave some of it at home I will for sure need it and I will regret not bringing it. On the other hand I've also spent so much time on my holidays and vacations fiddling with lenses, schlepping around gear that I didn't end up needing at all that I kind of just got fed up with it. Also bringing all that gear is kind of a risky business because that gear is expensive. So it's hard on your bag, it's expensive, you might lose it, you might break it and it is kind of a hassle to carry it everywhere. So even though having more gear, especially camera gear, would probably allow me to capture my experiences and whatever I'm doing in the best quality possible, it doesn't necessarily translate into me having the best experience possible in the first place. Very often quite the opposite actually. That is why I made an effort to create a system that allows me to still capture everything I want to in decent quality without getting in the way of the experience. And maybe as a side effect it will also make shooting photos and videos more fun again. So in short, in this video we combine my love for photography and videography with my love for everyday carry and a healthy dose of minimalism. So let me now give you what I currently think of as my perfect travel companion bag. Let's get into it. Let's start off with the bag as it serves as the foundation for everything. This is the MagSatch 13 by American company Nutsack. Before we go any further, Nutsack did send me this bag along with some other bags back in 2020 to try out and I already made a video about their MagSatch 11, the rucksack and the duffel bag. And honestly, I love them and I still use them every day. But this is not a sponsored video and I want you to know that this setup would probably work just as well with most other messenger style bags of this size. So if this specific bag is not your cup of tea, there are a lot of other options that you might want to look into. If however you like this bag, feel free to check out the affiliate link in the description below. What mainly drew me to the MagSatch were two features. First, the canvas material and the design. The overall build quality and materials are simply on point if you ask me. The thick wax canvas feels insanely rugged and it has held up great over the 18 months or so that I've owned it. The same is true for the thick leather bottom, which gives you that extra layer of strength and durability where it's needed the most. Plus, it just looks great. The back overall has a slim profile, even with all the stuff that I put in it. Also, especially in this color, it really flies under the radar. It manages to look expensive and kind of used and cheap at the same time, if you know what I'm saying. It has that barber-esque chic to it. I don't know how else to put it, but with a bag like this, I don't think you'll get noticed in the crowd or need to have a fear of putting it down on the floor, but it still doesn't look out of place in a fancy hotel or restaurant. Why even go with a messenger bag at all? Well, two reasons actually. One is to prevent me from overpacking by giving me less space to work with, and another is that messenger bags, at least if they don't get too heavy, are just more comfortable to carry. Of course, a backpack does distribute the weight better on your back and is the healthier option, but at the same time, it does often lead to sweat building up on your back. Not so with a messenger bag that simply dangles around your hip. Messenger bags are also usually easier to access because you can simply sling them around and get to everything you need. Don't get me wrong though, if I need to carry more stuff like bigger water bottles, jackets or whatever, I will transfer this setup over to one of my backpacks. If you are interested in my latest backpack setup, feel free to check out the link in the description below. Anyway, aside from the aesthetics and build quality, I do like the closing mechanism on this bag. You see, it comes with a heavy duty YKK zipper, which is covered by a rain guard and with another big rain flap to cover the whole thing, which is latched to the back via magnets on either side of the flap and secured with this leather and brass pin buckle. You can of course just use it without ever closing the zipper and it also closes at least somewhat securely when you only rely on the magnets and not the leather strap. But having all of these options makes the bag fairly weather resistant overall and also provides more security against thieves. In terms of internal organization, the bag is somewhat minimalistic. 
It comes with a flat zippered pocket underneath that rain flap for quick access, two large pockets on the front of the main compartment and another flat zippered pocket in the back of the main compartment. That's it. Now me personally, I like to organize my gear a bit more, so I found my own ways to get the most out of this bag and we'll get into that in a moment. But for something that is meant to be a messenger slash business type of bag, I was kind of disappointed to not even find one pen loop, but there you go. At least this way, I guess it is open for more use cases. The lack of internal organization and the fact that I want to carry my camera gear is why I simply use my Billingham camera inlay in this bag. This inlay stems from the small Headley Pro bag by Billingham, which is also a great bag, but somehow I never really warmed up to it. But the inlay fits perfectly into the main compartment of the Mac set, with a bit of wiggle room on either side for other stuff. If you are interested in using this inlay, don't worry, you don't need to buy the Billingham bag, which is quite expensive itself, but they are sold separately and I'll obviously link them in the description below. So let's get into what I actually carry in this bag and start off with the boring stuff as in the basics that are just useful to have in most everyday situations. In the quick access front compartment I simply keep two spare masks. Wearing masks is still mandatory where I live in basically all workplaces, shops and restaurants so you gotta have them or you ain't going anywhere. Since I have a tendency to forget putting one in my pocket before I leave the house I always carry at least one spare in this bag just in case. Aside from that, I just keep some antihistamines in here to deal with allergies, as well as some ibuprofen to deal with headaches. I rarely need them, but when I do, I really want to have them. In the other flat zippered pocket in the rear of the main compartment, I keep an SD card to lightning dongle, so I can easily transfer files over to my phone without having to rely on those annoying wireless apps that cameras offer nowadays. And also, I always keep a foldable bag in here in case of some unplanned shopping or whatever. The last items in here are a slim 5000mAh power bank, as well as a short 30cm USB Type-A to Lightning Kevlar cable by Anker. I recently bought the iPhone 13 Pro, which offers great battery life in my opinion, but especially on vacations, I don't want to risk running low on my battery and maybe get lost somewhere, so I always bring a power bank, just in case. To the left of the camera insert, I keep a pack of paper tissues down at the bottom and a 350ml insulated bottle stacked on top of that. The water bottle is made by 720 degrees, it keeps cold drinks cold in the summer and hot drinks hot in the winter. I mostly use this as a water bottle, but since it's getting colder and colder, I might switch to carrying tea in it soon. Obviously 350ml won't get me through a whole day, but I always try to stay hydrated and having this is certainly better than having nothing at all. To round the section up, I keep a spare battery for my Leica Q2 on the bottom of my camera insert, along with my AirPods Pro and some snacks stacked on top of that. I guess all of these items are pretty self-explanatory, so we'll just move on. This is where the fun is at for me. I love taking photos and videos a ton. It's just one of the great joys in life for me. I do, however, as I explained in the intro, have a tendency to overpack and bring too much gear and then spend too much time fiddling with that gear. And that sometimes might actually get in the way of me having a good time or enjoying the moment. So what I'm trying to do with this setup then is packing gear that simply doesn't get in the way. And in terms of photography, for me personally at least, I think the camera that fits that bill most perfectly is the Leica Q2. I started with the Fuji X100F three years ago. I loved that camera and when Fuji announced its successor, the X100V, which offered a sharper lens wide open, weather resistance and some other nice improvements, I switched immediately. The Fuji X100V is definitely among my all-time favorite cameras and I would highly recommend it for a setup like this, but recently I bought something else to replace it with, the Leica Q2. Now this is probably the king in the field of high quality fixed lens cameras and what can I say, it really is wonderful. I don't think at all that it is worth three times as much as the Fuji, but it was still worth the money for me, if that makes sense. I actually think the Fuji X100V is a better camera in some areas, and I'm not talking about the form factor here. I will keep it at that for now, but if you're interested in seeing a comparison video between the Leica Q2 and the Fuji X100V, feel free to check out my comparison video linked in the description below. For now, I will just say the Q2 is a ton of fun and it has some strong points which really set it apart from other fixed lens cameras like the Fuji X100V. Also, the fact that they actually gave it an IP52 rating really gives me the confidence to bring it everywhere and use it in all kinds of situations, no matter if there's rain, no matter if there's a hailstorm, I can simply use it and it has worked wonderfully so far. 
On the video side, however, the Q2 is certainly not my weapon of choice. I like to shoot a lot of videos and sometimes even vlog my trips, but I don't want to run around with a big camera and microphone setup as that would just draw way too much attention for my liking. So to cover the video side of things, I always like to bring my Sony ZV-1. I think this is an amazing little camera for videos and it offers ridiculously good image quality and functionality for something of its size. I tend to always shoot in Picture Profile 6, also known as Cine 2, to retain a bit more dynamic range and flexibility to color correct in post. One issue with this camera that has been raised many a times is the fact that the 24mm with the added 4K crop and the active stabilization crop is way too tight a field of view to capture a lot of everyday situations, especially if you are trying to vlog with it. So in order to circumvent that issue, I bought the Ulanzi Ultra Wide Conversion Lens. It is a lens that screws onto the front element of the camera and converts the 24mm into an 18mm equivalent field of view. I think with all the crops added on top, you still end up somewhere in the neighborhood of a true 24mm equivalent field of view. But obviously that 24mm is now 4K and stabilized, so it actually works for its intended use case. I have used the ZV-1 with this adapter for about a year now and I haven't had any troubles with the motors or anything else so far. If I do however not want to use the Ulanzi conversion lens, I simply unscrew it and put it down at the bottom of the camera inlay. I have mounted a flexi divider so I can put the conversion lens down there and stack the ZB-1 on top without the two touching each other. And with these two cameras I have pretty much all of my travel photography and videography needs covered. Could I get better image quality with a bigger interchangeable lens setup? Yes. But again, the cameras I'm using here simply don't ever get in the way and that simply leads to me using them more often and therefore getting better shots. This setup has worked great for me so far and obviously I can simply transfer the inlay to any other bag or backpack I might want to use in any occasion. This section ain't big, but it's still worth talking about. In the two pouches inside the main compartment, I keep a filter pouch, a spare battery for my ZV-1, a small moleskin notebook and a brass pen by Caveco. The filter pouch is just a random piece of shit that I bought from Amazon, but it does its job even though it looks and feels terrible. If you have any suggestions on something more decent with a similar but preferably even slimmer form factor, feel free to drop it in the comments below. I would certainly appreciate it. I keep a 49mm polarizer and a 49mm Tiffin Black Pro Mist quarter stop filter in here. I bought both of these for the X100V, but since the Q2 also uses a 49mm filter thread, I was able to simply keep my filters and continue to use them. Down at the bottom, I also keep a dead cat that can be mounted to the hot shoe of the ZV-1. It works great for what it is, but I only use it in really high wind situations because it looks kind of weird and it also tends to lose some of its hair all over the place. One thing I rarely break out, but that is still nice to have with me, is the Ulanzi MT-16 tripod. First of all, I don't use this as a selfie stick, even though it kind of is that. I use this as a very compact table tripod I can set up everywhere to get a bit more height on some of my shots. It feels solid enough to trust it with my Sony ZV-1 and it packs down small enough that I can simply put it in my bag on the other side of my camera inlay and forget about it. On the other side, as I mentioned earlier, I keep my A6 Moleskin notebook and the brass Caveco Lilliput pen. Now the Moleskin notebook is just what it is. After seeing so many people here on YouTube using real pen and paper to write down their thoughts, I thought I might just give it a try and well, it's really actually quite nice. The best pen I have found to use on the go is this brass pen called the Lilliput by Caveco. Caveco is a German brand, which is bonus points in my book, but this pen really is just a delight to use. First of all, it does offer a genuinely nice writing experience in my opinion, and that is in huge part down to the ballpoint refills they use. Everyone who I gave this pen to just for a brief moment was like, oh, that does write really nice, without me even mentioning it before. Also, it is made from solid brass, which gives a bit of a more weighty feel to this pen. Even though the form factor is quite similar, it feels like a completely different animal compared to something like the Fisher Space Pen. And again, it is also way nicer to write with. The brass cap screws onto the front element, so there's no fear of leaking here. When you are using the pen, just screw the cap to the back end to get that full-size pen writing experience. If you unscrew the tip to get to the roller bar refill, you see that this is not simply stuck in there somehow or made from plastic, but it is yet another finely machined piece of brass 
that unscrews from the bottom of the tip. They even carved out fine grooves so it's easier to grip and unscrew. Brass does of course develop a patina over time so it always looks kind of dirty but I've grown to like it. To complete the setup I sometimes also like to pack my 11 inch iPad Pro. I rarely ever bring it when I'm carrying this bag simply because with the iPad in it the weight gets somewhat uncomfortable over long periods of carrying it but it does fit nicely, slotted right behind the camera inlay and I can wrap the little padded lid around it to keep it out of the way and the iPad more closed in and secure. Just FYI, it is possible to fit an 11 inch iPad Pro with the pen and keyboard in here but it is a tight fit so I almost never bring the keyboard. So yeah, that is my current travel companion bag setup. If there is one thing I might change about this bag, it is actually the magnets. For some reason, if my ZV-1 gets near the magnets, it turns itself on, which is not great, especially when it's still inside of the bag, because it uses up battery for no reason and it might even damage the camera, because it can fully extend the lens. But at least that hasn't happened a lot since I started using the camera inlay in this bag. Other than that, this setup really works perfectly for how I intend to use it. If you made it to this part of the video, thank you so much for being here. I truly appreciate it and I hope you got some ideas for your next upcoming trip. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor and give this video a thumbs up. If you're interested in seeing more videos about cameras, EDC, gear and all that good stuff, subscribe to this channel. I will see you all next week. Until then, take care. Bye bye.